News at 9 with Sarah Scarlett, Chief Meteorologist Jared Floyd, and Sports with Chris Demersion. Thank you for choosing Fox 14. I'm Sarah Scarlett. Topping our second half hour on Fox, it's a question that's become a hot topic in Washita Parish. Should liquor be sold on Sundays? Fox 14's Randall Newsom is back in the studio after the Washita Parish police jury meeting. Randall? Hey, Sarah, I spoke with police jury member Jack Clampett, who believes it's a good idea and will even help lead to more responsible drinkers in our area. The Washita Parish police jury has introduced an ordinance that people have been talking about for a while alcohol and which days it should be sold outside the Twin Cities. Right now, six days a week, you can walk into any store in Washita Parish and buy alcohol, except on Sundays. But that may be about to change just outside the Monroe and West Monroe city limits. So what do residents think so far? The police jury's already asked in a poll online. 82% for and 18% against. So it seems like the majority of the people are ready for it. Jack Clampett believes selling on Sundays could solve a few problems. It's not that the people are not buying alcohol on Sunday. They're traveling to other places to buy it. He believes people who travel further to get liquor may be more dangerous drivers. First off, you've got people driving back after they buy liquor. We want them to have a short drive to get to their house, so there's a safety issue. And he believes not having Sunday as an option for customers hurts store owners on the outskirts of the Twin Cities. And it gives them an unfair advantage over the merchants that are in the parish that don't have that ability. This was just the introduction. In the next meeting, people will have a chance to make their case, whether they're for or against this move. You're going to see the store owners show up that night. You're going to see the churches show up that night. And there will be open discussion. But by the looks of it so far, Sunday package sales are very close to becoming a reality. Now, the official vote for this ordinance will happen at the next police jury meeting in November. Live in the studio, Randall Newsom, Fox 14 News. Thanks, Randall. We have an update to a shooting arrest. They caught 19-year-old Latre Wilson the day after the incident and charged him with attempted second-degree murder. Sheriff Dusty Gates says the sheriff's office and Farmerville police are now searching for 21-year-old Antonio Lamar Gibson, who is known to hang out in the Farmerville and Monroe areas. They believe Gibson is the second suspect in the shooting that left two vehicles wrecked and one man wounded on September 3rd. Wilson and Gibson are accused of shooting at four people that night at the North Villa Apartments on Highway 15 after a fight that had happened earlier that night. One 21-year-old victim was shot and hospitalized for eight days. If you've seen Gibson, the sheriff's office says he could be armed, so don't approach him. Call the sheriff's office at 318-368-3124 or Farmerville Police at 318-368-2226. A warrant has been issued for the son of an elderly woman who was found covered in dog and human feces in her home. David Herforth is now wanted for abuse of endangered or impaired persons. The 76-year-old woman was discovered after neighbors called in reference to a barking dog. Animal control went to investigate and heard the woman calling for help. When they went into the house, the officers removed 30 dogs. They say this is one of the worst cases that they've ever seen. Camden police say the woman is, quote, doing well and is still being hospitalized. Another mistrial declared for the man accused in a horrific murder in Mississippi. The judge has declared a mistrial in the murder case of Jessica Chambers. The judge asked the jury to come to a decisive conclusion this morning in the retrial of Quentin Tellis, who's accused of killing 19-year-old Jessica Chambers in Panola County, Mississippi, but the jury being unable to come to a consensus. This is the second time Tellis has been on trial for the murder after a hung jury last year. Prosecutors said they were disappointed after day, today's proceedings and had not made a decision on whether to try a third time. I can't get into the minds of jurors, obviously. Um, but, you know, this was, you know, I've done this 25 years, and this was probably the single most attentive, hardworking jury that we've ever had. And, and as the judge said to them, and, as I, as, and I agree wholeheartedly with the judge, you know, they did, they did their job. They just couldn't all agree. This week in the jury listened to cell phone testimony, which investigators said showed Tellus was with Chambers when she died. He faces another murder indictment in the 2015 death of ULM graduate student Mean Sheen Sho. Tellus has already pleaded guilty in 2016 to charges of using her debit card after she was found dead. Getting to know your neighbors can be the best way to take back your streets. Lincoln Parish will be doing just that tomorrow and again later this month. Fox 14's Brian Briggs is back after a trip to learn more about it. This little park in South Ruston may be quiet for now, 
But come Tuesday at 5 p.m., familiar sights and sounds will fill the air as residents from Lincoln Parish celebrate. It brought a great feel good between community and law enforcement. So that's where we started from. And then here we are a year later. The Unity in the Community 2.0 National Night Out will be celebrated two nights in October this year, the 2nd and the 9th. Each night will offer free food, entertainment, and most importantly, community involvement. Sheriff Mike Stone wanted to bring the community closer, and the idea was born. We've really uh, tried to come along with Sheriff Stone, envision and embrace National Night Out, uh, just bringing a healthier, more feel-good um, solution to our communities. The city of Ruston, the meaning of this event goes past the free hot dogs and cotton candy. It's just one of the many ways that the city is trying to build a more stronger, unified community. The night out allows residents and city officials to connect on a more personal level, building a stronger community overall. Uh, we're really excited about having two events this year, and we're blessed in Lincoln Parish in that we have the support of the community. And what a way to do it, with free food, entertainment, and the company of your neighbor. And it's a lot of fun, too. Who doesn't like a bouncy house and a hot dog? I'm just excited that, that people come out, have an opportunity to just be uh, involved with one another, with nothing involved but one thing, love. Come together, share, have fun. That was Brian Briggs reporting. The Lincoln Parish Sheriff's Office wants to let residents know that they plan on continuing this event for many more years to come. So if you can't make it this year, don't worry. Lincoln Parish will be open next year. One resident of St. Joseph's home got the ride of a lifetime today thanks to a generous car owner. Alice Fudge got to fulfill one of her biggest dreams. She rode in a 1965 Mustang convertible. She's been in love with Mustangs her whole life and the opportunity of a lifetime presented itself. Freddie Cassio owns the Mustang and gave Alice a celebration ride this morning. That is her favorite car. It's a classic and she loves Mustangs, but that was her favorite. And Mr. Freddie Cassio came and um, gave her a ride. He was so gracious to do that and we're so thankful for that. Alice has been a resident at St. Joseph's home for more than 30 years. That's great. That's a pretty good celebration, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I wish the weather would have cooperated, maybe let the top down, but uh, it was a little, little rainy and also that does uh, also invite a sunburn, too, if uh, that's your skin complexion's warrant. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I was fighting the sunburns over the last week, that's for sure. And it looks as though we may have to deal with them a little bit more through the rest of the week. We'll have a full look at the forecast coming up next on Fox. Okay.